Hi again, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a good look at Logic Pro 10's drummer instrument. Now, if you weren't aware um, that this was released with Logic Pro 10, it's a dedicated virtual drummer instrument. It's brand new, and it came out with uh, version 10. And for me, it's about the first virtual drummer application or instrument that I've really enjoyed using and found really seamless and lightweight. Um, I've used pretty much every other virtual drummer app out there. I'm not saying this is the best. It's just worked really well for me. I found it to be really snappy, really intuitive, and I like the way it's built right into Logic. Um, I've downloaded all the additional content, and the first tip I'm going to give you here is if you've got the internet connection for it, because it's a pretty hefty download. I forget the um, actual um, exact size of it, but um, it's fairly large. Um, it's well worth getting every single um, drummer kit there is, basically. Uh, I think you're looking at sort of 14 meg, something like that. Um, and then what I did is put them on another drive. Um, I used something called Symbolic Linker to do that. That's really another tutorial. But um, for me, I run a solid state drive as my system drive, so I wanted everything um, on another drive. So I would take the time to get that, all that additional content downloaded um, and put it on another drive or whatever you have to do. It really gives you all the scope possible when using this instrument because, uh, you know, you can get all the different variations, not just in patterns, but in, in actual kits as well. So I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks that I've um, sort of been using. I'm not going to um, cover the basics. I'm not going to sort of show you how to use the intricate um, sort of details and go into the intricate details of how this thing works. There's plenty of tutorials out there uh, that have sort of gone over the basics. Um, this is Drummer right here. Um, I'm using it in this track right now. So what you're hearing here is actually part of a pro an ongoing project. It's, it's something that's going to be used uh, commercially. It's not um, something I've knocked up for this. So I am actually using it in, in my everyday work. One thing that I'm finding really nice about Drummer is that it's really easy to create variations of your part. Um, when you change something in Drummer, it automatically changes the value of that part. So if you change the complexity or how hard the drummer's playing or whether you're using toms or snare, um, that automatically changes within that part. And you can then edit that part once it's been rendered. And it's rendered pretty much instantly, you know, as you change the parts. Uh, change the values, the part changes as well. So it's really, really, really quick and intuitive. Um, the cup, the things I wanted to show you were really about breaking out the sounds into separate outputs and also triggering other pieces of software with drummer's output. So these are two things that um, hadn't really been covered for me. So hopefully they'll be of use to you. Now in this project, I am already um, breaking things out. You can see, and I'll just play back what I've got here. So the drums come in here, we've got our kick, we've got our snare, we've got toms, hi-hats, and I've actually made another um, another one here, but you can just, this little plus and minus will give you more or less breakouts. Uh, I'm going to do this from scratch in a second, so you'll, you'll see it in action, but um, this channel here is everything else, so it's your percussion, it's your, um, your crashes, and I sort of use it like a master stereo group. I've then taken all these and bust them into three groups uh, and essentially this is to let me perform parallel processing. But you can hear that in this section, for example, I move between two really different parts. So a tom based part. And then it's faded and it's automated. And then we come back in with a more intense part here. Now, what this allows us to do, this breakout, is it allows us to treat each part separately. This is pretty obvious, but also it allows us to send different parts to different effects. So it gives you real freedom and real control within drummer's parts. For me, running it as a stereo output was just no good. It gives you a good idea of the beats and the sound that you're going to get and the grooves um, and setting up the kit. But beyond that, when it comes to mixing, 
you know, if you want to apply some larger reverb or whole reverb to a single part, um, you're going to need to break it out into parts. So let's go ahead and create a brand new um, drummer. Now I've just created a brand new project and when I did that, um, it gave me the option to open the first track as a uh, drummer, but just to show you, we can just delete it um, quite easily. And when you open up the first track, it'll allow you to create drummer there. When it does that, it's going to open up the sort of the basic part, which is sort of like a rock, a straight rock beat uh, with the SoCal kit. Now, this is obviously stereo, so this is where we need to sort of work on it. Um, if you go to the instrument uh, loadout here, you can see that it says stereo and we've got multi output. You need to switch to that multi output to get that breakout. As soon as you do that, when you go to the mixer, you'll see this little plus minus um, button here, and that is um, going to automatically assign um, different parts of the drum kit to. Uh, the consecutive parts that you create, the consecutive mixer channels that you create. So as we press plus here, you're going to see um, kick, snare, toms, and I just kept going until the names run out. And we've got kick, snare, toms, and hi-hat. So now when we play the part, you can see everything broken out. And what this means is that we can now um, start to process, you know, the snare completely separately from everything else. Now this is great because we can also send to reverb if we want. Great. And that's how you uh, break it out into separate channels and that's how you're going to mix it um, and pan it and change the levels and change the processing and everything else. But let's say we wanted to use the part that we've created here um, and I'm going to loop it. Let's loop this first one to trigger another piece of software. So maybe another drum machine that you've got or a sampler or something else. It's pretty easy. This may look like audio, okay? But it's essentially MIDI. And what it's doing is, as you change those values in drummer, say the fills here, the complexity, you can see the parts change. And if you change toms, it may look like audio is being created. And if I zoom in, it sort of looks like audio. It's, it's really a proprietary display tech that they've created for this specific instrument. But it is actually MIDI. So what this means is that you can use this to trigger anything. And to demonstrate that, let's get into it. I'm going to go plus here. Um, open software instrument and I'm going to load say um, native instruments battery okay so here we are in battery 4 when I opened it there it decided to scan every sound in my library um, probably because I just did a new system update so um, it does fit nicely into the 720 window luckily uh, you can see everything loaded up I've just loaded a basic house kit here so at the minute, um, we can just trigger things manually. But if we close that away and grab our drummer part and hit Alt, we'll get a copy. Now you can see the MIDI now. Um, this really gives you a clear representation of the MIDI. Um, if I open up the piano roll, zoom in a little bit, you can really get a good idea of what's going on. So this really proves that it is just really just a MIDI generator, um, and that's exactly how it works. Um, one good thing to do here, um, instead of creating an absolute copy like that, if you want it to follow the part, is to press Alt and Shift at the same time. Now this creates an alias, just as it, we, we have done in you know previous generations of Logic, uh, but what this means is as you alter that drummer part, this one will alter as well. So if we alter the fill amount or we alter, uh, well, anything, you know, the complexity, um, this MIDI will change. So let's have a listen. Um, we can mute the original part. And this is triggering our house kit. Perhaps not the perfect kit for this part, <laughs> but 
it, it really gets the point across that you can trigger anything you want. Um, so let's turn the complexity up. Let's turn the toms on. And remember, because this is just MIDI, we can change the kit anytime we want. And of course, we can go back to the drummer and change the drummer or change the, the pattern. That's a better example, I think. Great, so there you go, and you can export that, and you can do, you can edit it. So if you copy an ab, once you've finished, you can copy an absolute version, edit the MIDI, change it around, export it into audio, do exactly what you want, and you get that real custom feel. So you're using Drummer really as just sort of a MIDI groove generator, and you can bypass its internal library if, if you're not uh, too happy with the real drum sounds and you want something more electronic. Uh, this is the ideal way to do it. And as well, you can break out those separate parts from your, your third party drum machine and get that freedom in the mix as well. So there's breaking out the Logic's drummer into separate parts and into separate channels and also how to trigger third party instruments with its uh, internal groove system. Hopefully this has been useful. Um, if you want to know anything more about Drummer or want to see it in action and how I use it, uh, let me know and I'll maybe do another part on this. Um, otherwise, have a great time with it and uh, wish you all the best of luck in your music.